Hi everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you are new, I'm Corey. Thank you so much for being here. If you're returning, thank you so much. You know I absolutely adore you. Super excited about today's video. I am going to be doing something I have not done in about 35 years, if you can believe it. Stay tuned to see what that's going to be. DIY number one. So for this project, I have the Waverly chalk paint and pool, the same in ocean, and then I have my home decor, white Adirondack, and a whole bunch of pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. Now you can see here, I have them all divided out in groups of three, and I am giving them two good coats of chalk paint. So I'm starting out with the pool, and then I'm going to move on to the ocean. And then once I have those done, I am gonna go ahead and try to come up with a mid-range color by mixing those two together. So I've got my pool I'm putting in there and then my ocean and then, whoops, I got a little too much ocean on my tree. <laughs> but I just went with it and I blended in just part of that chalk paint. And uh, I ended up using the other for my second coat on the dark blue. So it all worked out. But uh, once I had that all done, I went ahead and did the same thing with the pool and the white to try to lighten that. Ooh, try to lighten that up a little bit um, so that I would have um, a lighter shade of that because I'm kind of trying to go with an ombre sort of effect, if you will, with my pumpkins that will be displayed together. And then I just came in with my brushed metal. This is by Folk Art and I painted up all these little stems. So cute. DIY number two. So I have this sweater that I absolutely love, but I managed to get stains on the elbows. Goodness only knows what I leaned into, but it was on both elbows and I could not get it out. So we're going to DIY with it. I am just cutting the sweater along the seams because I wanted to have a nice flat area that I could work with. So I'm going to tuck those other little pieces away for future DIYs. But now I am taking the piece that I cut out and I am folding it up, folded it in quarters, just trying to get it all nice and flat. I am keeping the shorter edges on the outside so that I can see where they are so that when I cut this in a second, I won't end up, you know, having a really weird shape. So I'm cutting it kind of at a little bit of a curve to attempt a circle. It does not need to be perfect. It is not perfect and that's okay, but we've got a general um, round shape here. So I have these needles that I picked up at Joann's a while back. They were called doll needles. So it's got a nice large eye for the needle and then the needle itself is about four inches long. So. That was going to work out really well for what I'm trying to do here. I am using some of this uh, twine that I had picked up at Habitat for Humanity. It's a little thicker than what I need, so I'm just pulling it apart. I wanted something that was going to be nice and strong because in the past when I have worked on projects like this, my thread has not been strong enough and it ended up snapping on me. So I am trying to save myself the pain and trying to decide if I'm coming in from the inside or the outside. I ultimately decided on coming in from the inside because that's where ultimately I want my knot to be so that I can tuck my ends in and hide them. This is super easy, even if you are not a sewer. It's just a simple in and out and in and out. I've got this sped up about three times, you guys, so do not let it intimidate you if you are not a sewer. This is something anybody can do. So I'm just kind of gathering it up on my needle. You don't have to do that. I just had the length of the needle and I figured it would be faster to do it this way. So once my needle was all full, then I would just pull off the um, knitting or the fabric, whatever you want to call this, um, and slide my twine through so you can see the stitch work that's happening there. And that will not show later, that will be completely hidden. So I am going to do that all the way around the perimeter of my circle. And then I am going to um, kind of straighten out my ends, if you will. So I tied a knot in the end of that tail and I'm just kind of evening everything out. I want two tails, so I'm pulling out that 
beginning end. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff this with fiber fill. I'm, I like to kind of floof up my fiber fill before I stuff things. So that's what I was doing there. And then once I get it to the level that I want, I'm gonna pull my strings tight and go ahead and I'm gonna tie those off. And you might need to just kind of help the fabric um, slide further down on the twine or the the thread that you're using because um, sometimes it just kind of gets a little jammed up when it gets super thick like that so tying it off in a knot and tucking my ends into the inside of my little pumpkin so doesn't quite look like a pumpkin yet but we'll get there so I'm taking some of that twine that I had uh, cut off before and I'm taking another single layer of it and putting a really large knot in the end of that because I want to make sure it is not going to pull through my fabric when I do this. So, because I'm going to be pulling on it quite a bit. So I, pull, I stuck my needle straight down through and pulled it around and then went back through again and now I'm pulling tight. So you see how I did that? And I'm going to do it again on the opposite side and stick it right down through. And every time I go back down through the center, I am going right next to where I've been working, but I am not going back through the same hole because especially with that first hole that I made, I don't want to enlarge in it to the point where my knot ends up being able to slip through. So I'm just, I'm working in that same general little quarter inch area, but I'm making a new hole every time I go through. Just, I don't know if, if what I'm saying is, I don't know if what I did would make a difference or not, but it made me feel better about what I was doing <laughs> and that I was going to be a little bit more secure. Now, um, I had run out of my length of twine, so I had added on some more, and I'm just going to keep sectioning this off until I have six sections. And it was right about here that my memory card on my camera ran out of memory, and I did not realize it, and so I didn't know that it didn't continue to record. So... At least you can see here my sections and then I will show you in a second how I finished it. So this is the finished product. So I've got a couple of shells that I pulled out of this pack from Dollar Tree. And then I had these little birch wood pieces also from the Dollar Tree in my stash. And then I used a little bit more twine. So I just used hot glue and tucked that little birch stem down inside that opening hole. Sorry, I'm a little off screen there um, and then I hot glued some of the shells there to serve as our little leaves and then I made just a regular tie your shoe um, bow now I'm showing you the bottom just so you can see how nice and neat it was I did consider using the bottom as my top but ultimately decided that I wanted to do it this way but you can do it however you choose and with whatever colors you choose and whatever embellishments I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration DIY number three. So this is a Dollar Tree foam pumpkin. I've got my crystal Waverly chalk paint and I am going to be cutting into this carvable pumpkin. Um, I think I've seen Jessica Lynn from Jessica Lynn at Home do something similar. I think she did an arrangement like this last year. I think it was Jessica, but um, I might be mistaken. So, and if you are not familiar with her, you will want to check her out. She is fantastic. But um, I'm just prepping my pumpkin. Probably could have done that more safely. So just be careful if you're going to carve these things. <laughs> Giving it two good coats of my crystal chalk paint and getting it all set. Once it's dry, I've got my Dollar Tree picks that I'm going to use as well as a pool noodle. And I'm just going to cut off a little section of the pool noodle to use as floral foam. It is denser than floral foam. It's a little harder to, to work with, but it's definitely doable and more economical because you get a lot more of it for a dollar. 
So using a whole bunch of hot glue, I'm gonna secure that down into the bottom of my pumpkin shell. And now I'm gonna come in with my picks. And if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know I love to cut apart my picks. I just find that it's easier to work with them and I can kind of get them to do more of what I want if I'm working with them in smaller pieces. So I'm working around the very base of the edge of my pumpkin vase, if you will. And so I'm starting out with all these cute little leaves. I found these when I was at Dollar Tree with my friend Devin, freckled mom. I was up in Boston on vacation and she and I got together because she lives in that area. It was so fun to meet her. And we were so excited to see these little leaves. That was where we found them. And I'll be doing a haul at some point with all of the goodies that I found while I was up there. Um, but for now, I'm going to use them in my project. So I've also got these blue hydrangeas that I'm tucking in. And I am starting from the outside and working my way in. And as I go, I'm also going to be building up the, the center. So starting low at the edges and then working my way in and building it up taller at the the middle so that's where i'm starting to build this a little bit here with some more of the leaves and then i'll go ahead and layer in some more of the hydrangea and again this is something where you can use whatever colors you want if you are not into the blues and the whites you could totally use regular traditional fall colors you can use whatever flowers you want the only um, limit is your imagination, right? So please take this as inspiration and create something that is going to make your heart happy. I'm now using these little flocked balls to add a little bit more interest. I think they are so cute. I heard Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs talking about them and I was so excited when I saw them up in New England. So I had to grab them. I just think that they are so cute. And I think the tag said flocked balls. I think, that, I don't know if that's the technical term for them. I don't know what exactly they are supposed to be, but I think they are super fun and super cute. And so I decided to pop them in here and, and go with it. And you'll notice that the greenery on the stems, I do slide that up. I like to keep a lot of um, the leaves and the greenery on at times, um, just to kind of give it a little bit more fullness and just a little bit more dimension. So I'll just slide those up a little bit to help the arrangement. And there you go, there she is. I love this and I hope you do too. Now it's time for a shout out timeout. So cute, Julie. These are awesome. I love the vintage tech. That is so clever. And pretty Diane, all these patriotic ideas and the little ducks, adorable. And wow, Iona, she has been busy. Look at all these amazing projects. And Super Crystal by Purple Pixie Friend, awesome job. And awesome, Rose. These are gorgeous. Thank you so much for sharing. I would love to give you a shout out as well. If you have interest, please send me an email with your pictures at craftoficori at gmail.com. DIY number four. Okay, you guys, this is what I have not done in about 35 years. And this shade is actually even older than that. It's over 50 years old. It is time for it to have a makeover. So the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to use my craft knife very carefully and I'm going to remove it from the frame. And the reason that I am doing that is because I want to reuse the frame, you know, upcycling we're going to give this a makeover so i'm very carefully going to remove um, everything from the frame i'm not worried about the tape that's on here that it's kind of crumbly and and i don't i don't care about that so much so because that's not critical to what we need to do but I am concerned about the shade part itself i want to keep that as intact as possible 
because we're gonna be using that as our pattern to create our new lampshade. So I've got the frame removed now, and I'm just going to clean up my surface, setting the frame aside for a moment, and I am going to do my best to try and get the rest of this um, taken care of and, and opened up. And I was a little bit on the struggle bus here. The glue on this puppy was really holding tight. And I did not want to use my hot, my heat gun on this um, because this is a little bit of, um, I want to say plastic. I don't know what exactly this is made out of, but I was honestly afraid that I would melt it and warp it and shrink it. And I need it to stay in as close to its present shape as possible. Hopefully that makes sense. So I finally was able to get in there a little bit. Um, if you do decide to redo a frame, just be real careful, or not a frame, a uh, shade, just be real careful. And listen, if you don't have a shade you wanna rip apart, we we can hook you up else um, in another way. Sorry, I'm having trouble talking, but I'll explain that in a minute. Now I did go ahead and paint my um, frame just because I wanted it nice and clean and new-ish, but um, that's not necessary if uh, if you don't want to do that. So I'm taking my pattern and I am using my lampshade paper that my new friend Colby up at the lamp shop in New Hampshire set me up with, among other things. I'll be showing you some of the other stuff that Colby sent my way. But um, I had reached out to him for assistance because I haven't done this in quite some time and I still have some items in my stash, but not everything that I need. So I went ahead and I traced out my shade pattern and I've cut it down now. And so I'm just getting it ready for the next step, checking out the shape of it. It's looking good. And that curved area, that's the top. So here are some lampshade how-to books that Colby sent my way. This is awesome, right? So if you've never done this before and you wanna learn these are step-by-step -step guides. These are a bunch of um, designs that Colby sent my way. I wanted to do something that was coastal. Um, and so I was just looking through the different um, things that I had there to pick out the image that I wanted to work with. And here's another lampshade construction book. My aunt is the one who taught me how to do this. My aunt, Cindy. Thank you, Aunt Cindy, if you're listening. And she used to make the most beautiful paneled shades with dried flowers and just gorgeous, beautiful work. But at any rate, I've got my design here that I'm gonna use, my little sailboat, and I have a piece of graphite paper from Arteza, and I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this behind my image with the graphite side facing my white lampshade paper. And I'm just gonna trace my image. You just wanna make sure that your design is lined up the way that you want it to appear on the shade. You wanna make sure that it's nice and straight. Now you could also put down a piece of wax paper over this or a piece of tracing paper if you wanna keep your image nice and neat and clean. It's also a really easy way to see where you might have missed in tracing your design. So in my case, I just went ahead and kept lifting it up every once in a while to check and see if there was anything that I missed. Once I had it all on here, I went ahead and I wanted to add one more little bird. At first I thought I was gonna be able to see my tracing through the paper and then I decided, yeah, I can't really see it well enough. So I flipped over the graphite paper so it's facing my yellow sheet now and I'm tracing the little bird again. And so now he is appearing on the back of my page. Hopefully that makes sense. So now I've got my little bird. I'm going to add him to the um image as well and the reason i did it that way i just i wanted him facing the other way so yeah <laughs> so once i have my image all transferred over oh i'm showing you this is the glass that i used to cut on that was in my stash it was kind of dirty sorry it, it's literally been sitting put away for like 35 years um so i'm going to be using my self-healing mat um to be on it and i'm just I'm breaking off my little um razor blade tip there because it's got notches in it for a new blade 
it's one of my Dollar Tree craft knives and I just want to make sure I had a really sharp point. Um, if you want to do this, I highly recommend getting an X-Acto knife, um, craft knife, because that is going to have a much finer point and make this much easier. And if I had to do it again, I might actually pull out that piece of glass and cut on the glass instead of on the self-healing mat, because I feel like the glass allows you to slide a little bit more easily and glide across what you're doing. Um, whereas I felt like I was getting a little bit caught up in the mat. So if you decide that you'd like to try this, um, you might want to consider using a piece of glass to cut on versus the mat. Now, when you're cutting this out, you want to make sure, think of it as a stencil. So if you created a stencil, remember you need to have parts of that stencil um, plastic or whatever you want to call it left intact, right? Otherwise your whole stencil is going to fall apart. Same principle here. We do not want to cut any holes to like have a, a large gap in our shade, right? So all of these lines are strategically placed so that we don't end up with holes, like gaping holes in our shade. So it's all dashed lines. There are a lot of dots that are used in pierce and cut lampshades. So just keep that in mind as you are cutting out your image or if you decide to design your own image, you want to make sure that you have enough gaps that your image will remain intact. Hopefully that makes sense. So once I had all of my lines cut out, I'm coming back in with my piercing tool. And at this point, I was remembering that when I used to do this, I usually pierced first. And I used to put like a little pillow underneath my piercing tool so that it would be able to go all the way through and not jab me. <laughs> so if you decide um, to give this a shot, again, I probably would do that instead of the self-healing mat because it would allow the little pierced holes to be slightly larger. And this, this was fine. It was just they were a little bit smaller than I normally would, would create them. So at this point, I'm going to use my same little piercing tool and I'm tucking it in to each of these little slits that I've created with my craft knife. And where I do have corners, so I'm going to kind of roll those up into the, the shade. So the the side that we're looking at right now this is going to be the inside of the lampshade so we want everything to meld into the shade you don't want anything sticking out on the outside of the shade so all of these little um rounded edges we're going to mold them in and you don't want to crease them you don't want them there to be like a fold so you're really just sculpting them and helping them to open up a little bit because that's what's going to let the light through and that's what's going to make your image really shine and glow and be beautiful so now with all of my artist friends you all are always reminding me to sign my work so you can do the same thing with your little lampshade i used to just put my initials on my shades um, but in this instance i decided i was going to do quarry so i am just trying to figure out how to do that backwards because remember this is the inside of the shade so i'm checking to make sure i did it right <laughs> So just keep that in mind when you are adding your initials. So now this is a heavy tracing paper. This is something else that I got from the lamp shop. So thank you so much, Colby. Um, and I am just cutting down a piece to size. Now I should have left it there. I'm showing you the quick glue. This is exclusively from the lamp shop and it's a great tacky glue that helps bond um, different surfaces together. And it, it dries relatively quickly. So it's, it's really great. Um, so I should have left the tracing paper there because everything was curling up on me a little bit here and it didn't occur to me until I, after I had all the glue on here, that it might have made more sense to just do a little section at a time with my um, tracing paper, you know, there. So word of the wise, you might want to just work on it in sections. I have applied glue to the very edge all the way around my shade here. And this is where I'm like, oh boy, 
how am I going to do this without getting glue everywhere, right? So I just used a teeny little bit of scotch tape on either side. I was just avoiding the glue. So on that side, it yeah, because I didn't catch enough of it because, again, trying to avoid the glue. But I was able to just secure the very, very edges down. And that was sufficient for me to be able to work with it and and get my tracing paper on. I was struggling a little there. So went ahead, applied my, my tr tracing paper. Now, keep in mind that you have this image that you have kind of popped up in the middle there. So you want to give enough room with this. So it's going to be a little poofy in the middle. It's not going to be something you're going to press flat onto your image, right? Um, especially because you want to have a little give for when you actually curl the frame or curl the shade around the frame again you don't want it to crush your image so give it a little bit of, of breathing room once it's completely dry you're going to go ahead and you're going to trim off all of that tracing paper as close as you can get it to the edge of your shade okay now i'm going to go ahead and put it back on the frame and man, you know, 35 years, trying to remember how I used to do all of these. I used to make so many of these. I loved them. We put them on the little chandelier lights, the candelabra light things, and um, on regular lamps. I just, I love the way that these look. I just think that they are so pretty. Um, but trying to remember how I did it so long ago, <laughs> it, it was slowly coming back to me, but usually when I was halfway through what I was doing. So I did apply a little bit of glue there at the top Edge. and here I'm just trying to figure out my best angle because I want to be able to get my clothespin on here and I'm using the gap in the clothespin to my advantage and then that is where I'm hooking it onto the frame and we're getting the frame as close to the edge as we can so hopefully that makes sense you can see me applying more glue and I'm just gonna roll it over and unfortunately you're not gonna be able to see much more of what I'm doing here but I'm just doing more of the same I am rolling I'm applying the glue rolling the frame onto it and then I am hooking it up with the clothespin to keep it secured until the glue dries I'm gonna do that all the way around the top frame so once I do that I actually ended up making a little bit of an oops, but I guess I'm going to show you the rest of getting this frame on here. So again, just right along the edge, just a little bit of glue and then rolling that right down onto it and securing it with the clothespins. And the clothespins are great because they do have that gap and so they hold it exactly as, as needed. They don't damage the um the shade unless unless you, you just want to be careful of how you place them but they're great and these are from the dollar tree too so um so here i've got it all secured now this is where i made my little oopsie i went ahead and i sealed the seam don't do that <laughs> Not until you have your bottom frame on because I did make it a little too tight. And as I mentioned before, this glue does dry. I mean, not instantly, but it does dry relatively quickly. And so it was already starting to bond by the time I realized that I was having trouble with getting this frame on. So I'm just putting the frame on. I am not using glue on it at this point. I am just trying to get it in place, trying to tuck it in here. And eventually I did just pull that seam apart. Fortunately, I, I think I did it just in the nick of time. But um, once I had that in there, I went ahead and resealed the seam. And then I stood it up once I had the seam, you know, solid, and I felt like it was good. I'm going to come in now on that edge that we didn't use glue and I am going to add some glue right to the edge between the paper and where well not between but because it's meeting directly but think of it as caulk like if you were to caulk your bathtub right so where the tile is meeting the tub it's that little edge and we're just going to seal it in there and that's going to bind the frame with the um, shade all right so now this is after it's completely dry you're going to want to let it dry probably for a good hour at least if you're in a cooler more humid environment it might need a little bit longer but i am going to go ahead and use this ribbon this is a lampshade ribbon that um, i got from the lamp shop 
Now, when I used to do my frame, or my frames, I don't know why I keep wanting to call it a frame. When I used to do my shades, I used to use grow grain ribbon. And I had tried different kinds of grow grain that you could just get at the craft store. It does not work unless they have at least 40% cotton. A polyester grow grain ribbon will not stick. I don't know why. Something about the polyester doesn't like the glue. Um, and I didn't realize until just recently, I was reading Lake's Lampshades, her blog, and she actually warned of that. I was like, well, now that is why I could never get that to work. Apparently it needs to have cotton in it. So word to the wise, if you want to use grow grain ribbon, you want to make sure that you are using ribbon with 40% cotton at least. Now, when I trimmed that, I made sure that it was going to butt right up against the starting edge. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I just used a little bit of glue on the edge to keep it from um, unraveling or fraying. So now we're going to roll this over. So. I think I was remiss in telling you when I applied to this ribbon, I was only applying about a third of that edge to the shade. So I was using a little tiny bead of glue right along the edge and only using about a third of it on the outside of the shade. Now I'm coming in and I'm just, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. You'll be able to see better in a little bit, but I'm using the nozzle on my little glue applicator to spread the glue evenly all over the inside of that ribbon because we're going to now roll that over onto the frame and seal that up and please if you are feeling intimidated by this please do not i learned how to do this when i was in middle school my aunt cindy taught me how to do this if i can do it you can do it especially if i can do it now after 35 years and trying to remember what i'm doing <laughs> so so you can definitely do this. It just takes a little time and a little patience with yourself. So here I am again, applying just the, um, the third to the outside edge. And here you can see how I was spreading that glue and rolling that down over the edge. Now, when you apply your frame, um, oh, and here is some velvet ribbon. This I did have in my stash. So this ribbon, and it's still in perfect condition, but it's about 35 years old, I think. Um, and the velvet ribbon, you want to make sure that you get this lined up perfectly because this is going to be your final step and your finishing edge. Um, but what I was starting to say before with your frame, if you don't get it perfectly lined up with the edge of your lampshade paper, you might want to go th back through there and just trim off with your X-Acto knife um, any overhang. And that's just going to help you when it comes time to, to apply that ribbon to the um, edge of your shade to finish it off. Because otherwise it could get a little dicey with the with the paper being in the way so again cutting that off so that it butts up you can see i'm trimming off a little bit more the wonder of the velvet it because it's fuzzy it helps to hide that seam so you just want to make sure you get it as close as possible to matching up with that original edge and that's it you guys we have a new lampshade let me know what you think and here we are with the final reveal. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite project was. If you would like to see me do another kind of lampshade or something similar, please leave a comment on that 
particular subject and let me know what you'd like to see. And be sure to check out my description box so that you can get the information on the lamp shop if that is of interest to you. But until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.